the voice of vaping. In each show, we share the latest about regulations and things you need to know, plus upcoming conferences and fests, along with interviews with the movers and shakers in this fabulous vape space. Are you looking to get into this ever-expanding marketplace? Do you want to master this industry? Listen up as Norm Bauer, the vape mentor, shares it all. And here's your host, Norm Bauer. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is Vape News Radio, Part 3. And the date on this show is the end of September, but by the time you're hearing, it's going to be October. This is show number 11. And thank you for all of you who have been listening. We've got over 115,000 downloads in the last, oh, say, five months or so. So we've been averaging pretty, pretty significant uh, continual download. And, of course, you can listen to us on Stitcher and iTunes. So go to Stitcher or iTunes and just go ahead and subscribe, and it'll be there as often as we put the new postings up. And our apologies if we got a little bit behind on posting. Postings. We had five Mondays in, in September, and we had some travel issues, and we had some mechanical issues. So, you know, we were actually a little bit behind, but by the time you hear this, we will be caught up. And I also wanted to remind you, if you didn't hear part one, we have a couple of special offers for you. One is, for those of you who are interested in a free copy of my book called Vapepreneur, which is your guide to mastering the vape space. Uh, we were giving it away for free in September, but because everything kind of got skewed, we are also expanding that into October. So just go to vapementors.com forward slash free book. Uh, I'm not going to try to sell you anything, but of course we'll sell you something if you want to buy it. And if you do want to buy some consulting, what I've done is I've packaged this together in a 45-minute phone consultation for $97. I don't normally offer that. It's not normally one of my packages. So this is only for you who are listening right now uh, if you're interested in just maybe uh, tacking into my brain for 45 minutes just to see if there's a business here that you need to uh, to take a look at. Also, I um, want to tell you that um, you know the name Mad Vapes, which is one of our sponsors. They're one of the largest and most well-respected names in the e-vapor market. But did you know that they have a network of retail stores throughout the eastern part of the country? Well, you know, come to find out that they're expanding this growing family of almost two dozen stores as Mad Vapes is expanding to the West Coast. If you live somewhere out in the western part or even in the central part of the country and would like to open a standalone retail vape shop with a great training program, terrific lines of juice and hardware and a track record that cannot be beat, give me a call at 949 949- 495-6162 or send us a note here through our website which is vapementors.com there was something else I wanted to make mention of. oh yeah I mentioned in top in top of the uh, show is that we are also doing an early Christmas present for three lucky people worldwide and what we're doing is we're having a contest and we're giving away one month free consulting that's four one hour sessions for free this would normally cost you about 600 bucks but I don't normally sell a four hour program but you know what we need to do is send an email to norm at vapementors.com and you just tell us why you want this, what you want to get out of it, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the most compelling stories. This is not going to be a random drawing. I'm looking for people who really, really are serious about getting into this industry. And you know what? If you're not interested in the vaping industry, that's cool. I can certainly give you some business strategic training in other businesses as well, but I'm going to you know make the broad leap that if you're listening to this show, that, that means you must have some degree of interest in the vaping industry. Moving right along, uh, in section number two, we interviewed the gentleman behind Mr. Good Vape, and now we're going to go a little bit of a similar but different direction, and you're going to hear an interview with Eddie with Holy Grail Vapes. Here's what caught my attention. You know, I've had people ask me or write me about this thing called CDB, that's Cat Dog Boy, uh, which stands for cannabidiol, and it's derived from hemp. Now, hemp, of course, has different connotations, and you know a lot of people associate it with marijuana, but it's also something that's been grown for thousands of years for paper and for clothing and for all kinds of different things. And I thought that hemp was legally able to be grown here in the United States, but not anymore. Thank you, President Obama. There has been some changes, and now there's some, um, there's some restrictions on hemp growth. So this is an interesting conversation about the crossover between our vaping industry and the marijuana industry, because here's the prediction I'm going to make. Within the not-too-distant future, and I'm going to say certainly within the next four years, you will see legalized marijuana on a national scale. What does that mean with the vaping industry? Well, you know what? You just keep listening to the show because we're going to keep you dialed into that as well. So go ahead and cue us up, Paul, and let's listen to Holy 
Grail Vapes. Hey, welcome back to Vape News Radio. This is Norm Bauer. I am here at ECC in Ontario, California. And as much as I pride myself on being a good teacher of this industry, I'm also a good student. And so there's a lot of brand new things coming around all the time. And so I ran into a gentleman named Eddie who is with a company called Holy Grail Vapes. Holy Grail Vapes. And they're offering a product line that, in all honesty, I really don't know very much about, but yet I get asked about it all the time, so I'm going to get educated, and you're going to get educated at the same time. So, Eddie, welcome to Vape News Radio. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be at ECC. I'm really excited. Uh, looks like it's going to be a good turnout. Uh, people are lined up at the doors, which is great. A lot of people here to uh, hopefully see Holy Grail. Right on. Um, so, let so me... tell us what Holy Grail is all about, and why are you different because of the product line that you carry? Okay, so I, let me give you a little bit of my, my background. I've been in the industry since 2009. We uh, primarily dealt with uh, all of the nicotine and uh, the, the regular norm that's in the industry. We've uh, we, we've then uh, basically grown into a new side of the business, which uh, we're very excited to be part of, and it's called CBD. CBD. And CBD stands for... Uh, hang on, Sandra. Yeah. You know, I want everyone to remember those initials because I can never remember them, and I don't know whether it's me, but people ask me about CBD all the time, and I'm thinking, what the hell are you talking about? So CBD stands for... Cannabidiol. Cannabidiol. And cannabidiol is a natural um, derivative of hemp. And all of our oils are uh, derived from industrial hemp from overseas, making it uh, legal in all 50 states. All right, so I used to think that hemp was manufactured here in the United States because historically they've made clothes from it, they've made paper from it. I didn't think that hemp was illegal, but hemp is illegally is illegal to grow in the United States right now? Hemp is only legal if it's done for medical research. Ah. So that's where we've uh, we formed a uh, partnership with uh, companies out in Europe that have uh, and farmers that have been doing this for probably close to a thousand years. Th- them and their families. And so they grow hemp for what purposes? They, they grow it for the textiles. Uh huh. But there is certain strains, and one of the strains that we've developed with them, um, no different than the Charlotte's Web, um, is is rich in CBD. So when you say strain, are you talking about a particular, uh, a little particular breed of? Yes. Okay, a particular so breed of hemp. The, the hemp is still grown for the textile, but it's still rich in uh, CBD. Got it. And, and so that's what makes it um, different than all the other uh, hemp hemp's that are out there. Here in the U.S., if you were to take, um, I would say, ninety nine percent of the plants from the hemp that are either grown for marijuana or or research, most of those plants are still going to be high in THC. It would cost. Uh, the weight of gold in order to produce what we do overseas. Okay, so, you know, people are taking your CBD and, and they're smoking it just like every other e-liquid, and why? They're not getting high from it. Is it just, be, is it, so what is it that's unique about TBD flavored oil that makes it different than one that's not? The, the hardest, that's a good question, okay, so the hardest. <laughs> so tell the, me, the, man, because I feel like an the idiot most, here. The most difficult question to answer is that one right there. Yeah. The FDA is regulated as so so much that's so tight on what we can say and do all i can say is this stuff we we uh we formulated with peg peg is a derivative of uh, coconut oil um it's a fatty acid um so we've uh, combined the cbd with peg uh we use a dab of vg just because everybody still wants to see that that big vape cloud, you know, and unfortunately, peg and CBD don't give it that. They don't do it. That, no. Yeah. So we had to uh, we, had, we had to put VG in there in order to get you know that vape, vapor cloud. But as far as what it's going to do for you, I have to leave that to the public. All right. So let's dig down to this, and I'm not going to put your feet yes. to the fire, even though I would like to. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to marijuana, yes. and uh, in full disclosure, I smoked in my youth, and I have no opposition to. I think legalization of marijuana is due and will come within the next handful of years. So, you know, the THC in marijuana is the active ingredient, but it has nothing to do with what you are growing in your product, correct? Is there any THC? It's a non-psychoactive product that we're doing. Uh, We do have THC in our product because we have to disclaim that, but all of our product has less than 1%. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of our... um, our formulations, and we have all of the uh, COAs on them, 
it's actually less than half, half of one percent, which is it makes it legal. So anything less than three percent, it makes it legal in, in all fifty states federally. All right. So if I was to go to a collective and get, and obviously the strains of marijuana today are a whole lot different than they were forty years ago when I was buying bags for fifteen dollars. So what would you say is the THC content of what you would call medical grade marijuana from a THC standpoint? So I can kind of use that as a relatively scale. Are they like a ten percent? They could be as high as uh, fifty and sixty percent. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you're like at a bare, bare, bare fraction. So for all intent purposes, I'm going to smoke your liquid because I like it, not because I want to get high. Absolutely. Um, you know what? I I I'm forty years old. I used and to, don't look I, a day over forty. I I, uh, I dabbled it when I was in high school. You know, but. Uh, you know, I can tell you that when you get high, it's a, that's the psychoactive part of it, um, and you're coming down and, and you're calm. CBD is the calming, calming portion of the product. All right, so, so that's it, interesting. It, it, give you, it gives me more of a level. So when I take it, and I have my 11-year-old takes it, he knows. So my 11-year-old was like, Dad, what are you doing? All I hear is marijuana, marijuana. What's going on? I said, son, I want you to research CBD. So like anybody and like yourself, I will send you all the links that I have so you can educate yourself more on CBD. He came back and he apologized. My son asked me for it. We have tinctures that we're coming out with. We are having che- we have chewables that we're coming out with. We have five-hour energy uh, drinks that we're coming out with and a power drink. Besides, besides the vape line, the vape line was the first thing we launched. But we're looking to do a lifestyle company. We think it's important that the world knows what they're missing out of their daily diet. So back, and it goes back centuries, uh, we used to feed hemp to our livestock. So our bodies produce CBD. CBD is in the breast milk. We have an endocannabinoid system, and the only the easiest way to explain it is the CBD basically can come in, and it's like an on-ramp, off-ramp of a freeway. If the 15 didn't have on-ramp, off-ramps, or the 91, we'd be in a lot of trouble, right? Mm-hmm. So the CBD basically helps... Um, and it has no limit to, to what it does for our bodies. Okay, so basically my incentive to use Holy Grail juice, Holy Grail liquid, is, you know, I like the flavor. And, and how many different flavors do you offer? We have 22 flavors uh, currently. And so you have your typical fruit and nuts and different yes, types of food, food flavors like that. But primarily all of them have the CBD base. And so they're all designed to kind of like chill me out a little bit. Absolutely. All right. If you're going to drive from San Diego to L.A. or vice versa, you do not want to be in your car without having your Holy Grail vape in your hand. Interesting. So if I was to get some type of a blood test, if I was to be, if I was stopped, which God forbid I never would, of course, but if I was to be stopped and people thought I was on something, if they took a blood test, would there be any evidence of anything in there that I shouldn't be caught with? So as you can see, I'm, I'm a little bigger person. Um, I have taken tests personally. Uh, we have uh, people like uh, Brandon Vera, uh, a UFC fighter that has taken uh, smokes our product, a similar product, um, and he's got negative results. The same with me. But we cannot make a claim, you know, because everybody's body type is different. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, you're a lot smaller than mine. Myself, with your frame, you could you could test positive. All right, so you know I mean? so I, that's a claim we, we cannot make. So, do you get a lot of negative publicity or a lot of pushback from people who think that you guys are glorified drug dealers? No. Good for you. Awesome. Yeah. You know, I've spoken to many uh, people in the. Uh, that are part of uh, our government and law enforcement and, and try to educate them myself. Yeah. And everybody's excited about this stuff. You Interesting. Know? And it's uh, it's a long time coming. You know, Obama passed the Farm Act back in February. I don't know, but your, okay. your, your gentleman was telling me about this Farm Act that our dear president uh, passed. So what is the Farm Act and why does it impact you? So the Farm Act uh, actually impacts all of us um, because... It's, it's allowing um, research to be done in the United States at a larger level. Um, as you see, a lot of the, the states are going CBD only, which um, we embrace, but we think that we want everybody to have what they need medically if, if they need it. You know, We'd like them to promote even the THC side because we feel that us, our people, you know, deserve what, what's been taken from us, and a lot of it goes back to greed. You know, if you look at the history of why hemp was taken out of the United States. Interesting. All right, so, you know, my business as, as Vape Mentors is really designed to help businesses open and, de- and develop a competitive position. So are there a lot of uh, 
liquid companies that are doing T C B D. C B D. I gotta remember that. No. There's only a handful. Uh, most of them are purchasing their liquid from us. Um, and we're welcome to uh, there's a lot of people lining up at the door right now okay. to uh, to help us formulate for them and or um, sell them the the raw the raw material in order for them to do it. Uh, we're open to it. We, we believe that this is gonna change the industry. We think that um, there is studies out there that show that um, people can quit quit smoking faster and more effectively by using CBD opposed to using a nicotine and a, and a, a VG or PG. Because not only is it getting them off nicotine, it's also chilling them out at the same time. Absolutely. All right, so right now your model is mostly B2B, and then you're going, you're kind of rolling into the B2C? Yes. Okay. And so... Um, this is fascinating, and Jesse, I have to tell you, this has been very, very illuminating. And so for the people that are listening, I think that they're going to agree. So contact information, should someone get a hold of you? Uh, www.holygrailvapes. Um, you can also go to haneepsourcing.com. Spell that, Haneep. Haneep is H-A-N-E-P-S-O-R-U-C-I-N-G.com. That stands for a Hemp in Old English. And um, hemp, that our sourcing company basically is the mothership, and that uh, spins off from uh, Holy Grail. So, do you see the day when we might be able to legally grow what you need here in the United States? Uh, every every state is doing it one by one. Interesting. Um, and California, right now, we're just waiting for them to adopt it as well, and, and we're uh, we're hoping that. That, that happens. We're so, crossing our fingers. so is that butting heads with the Fed, just like Colorado and Washington? If they legalize it on a state level, it's still illegal on a federal level. Is that the way it's going to go, go down? Well, well, still, we still need to get the hemp to be legalized, the industrial hemp here in the United States. That still hasn't gotten uh, gotten through. Okay. And that's that's federally we need that to happen. So right now you can grow, um, I guess you call it medical quality, yes, or, medical or, quality. Or, or research quality? Yes. And interesting. And so are these like different breeds of hemp? Just Absolutely. like you have different Absolutely. cats and different no dogs? No different than a lemon and a lime tree. Okay. Because they're cousins of each other. That's awesome. All right. So phone number, should someone get a hold of you or an email address? Uh, you can uh, info at holygirlvapes.com or info at haneepsourcing.com. Awesome. All right. So this has been a fascinating interview, and I thank you for your time. I wish you great success here at ECC and certainly as far as growing and expanding your business. So any closing words? Thank you for your time. We look forward to coming back. <laughs> right on. All right. This is Norm Bauer with Vape News Radio. Do not go away. We're going to be right back. You know, I have to tell you guys out there in the listening audience, um, I love this industry. I really do. I mean, here I am, a baby boomer at the age of 60, and I'm firmly involved in an industry that is so unbelievably dynamic. And if you're listening to this, that means you're in the industry or want to be in the industry as well. There's so many variations. There's so many ways to monetize this. And what I loved about that conversation is that I went in not knowing anything about CDB, and I came out. Certainly knowing more than I did, I don't profess to be an expert, but this is something you're going to hear more about because as we go into the legalization of marijuana, and this is not designed to be any type of legal rhetoric or anything else like that, but we're going to be going in that direction. You know, These guys came out with what I truly admire and what I truly teach, and that is how are they different? Why are they different? You know, They came out with a variation. It's a vaping juice. Well, big deal. There's thousands of vaping juices out there, but yet they have something a little bit different, and there's only a handful of people that do that. You can actually vape but still have a little bit of the CDB in there, so you kind of chill out a little bit. It's not narcotic. It's not marijuana. It just includes some of the, you know, the same chemical, some chemical reactions as you get from, from marijuana. So that's uh, that's really the takeaway I want you to get with that is that we are here. We are here to educate you. This industry is always going to be in transition. There's always going to be opportunities. You just have to be willing to look. You have to be willing to take that risk and and decide, you know, how or where or if you fit into it. And we are here at Vape News Radio to help you do that. Me personally, Norm Bauer with Vape Mentors, I want you to do that. Remember, you can download a free copy of my book called Vapepreneur. Just go to vapementors.com forward slash free book, and we're going to go ahead and give that to you for free during the month of October 
After that, the door is shut. You've got to pay for it. And, of course, on behalf of Vape News Magazine, we're going through a massive expansion to the point of where we're going to be putting out 12 issues a year starting in the next couple of months. And it's all going to be about education, value, edifying you, and making sure that you got all the information you need so that you can be a success in this very, very exciting, very dynamic space. So, Mr. Roberts, my engineer, eating down on that banana, is there anything, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say before we adjourn this, this meeting of show number 11? I would think that the move to legalize marijuana would have a positive effect on all of these things. I can't say that one is related to the other. That guy sitting in a Mercedes I talked about in the other episode, uh, vaping away, may or may not be interested in smoking marijuana. But i got to believe that it opens up the door to more people trying more things and wanting more ways to do it. So we, we kind of delved into this conversation very briefly, and I don't want to take up too much time because I think we ran a little bit long. But mm-hmm. if we had a time machine, and if we were able to go forward or backward in time, first off, how awesome would that be? So, you know, if you look at a kid today, a kid being anywhere from an infant to a teenager, they don't remember, they will never know a cord with the telephone as being the primary way of communicating in their home. Now, right. granted, there's going to be exceptions to that. They will never remember music that had to be physically delivered to you on this little piece of plastic with grooves on it. They right. will never know that. They will never know what it's like to have a, an automobile without you know, um, you know, a safety glass and without an airbag and without seat belts. With all, you know, those days are gone. They, we remember it because we, we grew up in that era. You mean they're not always going to chop down trees? squish them up, pour ink on them, and drive them to your house to deliver the news? No, no. As a matter of fact, just the opposite, which is, of course, why the newspaper industry is is in such bad, bad shape. So the point I make is is that today's kids, 20 years from now, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I remember when there was all kinds of controversy over this thing called vaping because it will be it will be accepted. Electronic cigarettes will be mainstream. Vaping will be mainstream. You're always going to have your smokers because it still carries that that rebel element that some people want and some people just want to inhale all those 4,000 carcinogens. That's always going to be there. Right. Same thing with marijuana. There's going to come a time, I'm going to say 20 years down the road, where people are going to say, do you remember when marijuana was illegal? Remember when you, know, you would go to jail? Jail, not hmm. for, not for days or for months, but for years or decades for dealing with as little as you know an ounce of marijuana. Those days are gone. The drug war is over. The drug war was a mistake from the beginning, and it was a huge, huge cost and a, you know a huge liability in regards to so many different things. And as you can guess, I'm pretty liberal in this regards. I believe people should have freedom of choice, and as long as they aren't hurting or damaging anyone else, they really should be able to do whatever they damn well please. And damn it, that includes vaping. So all of mm. you city politicians and government politicians and all you idiots out there who are trying to squash this industry, you know, forget about it. It ain't going to happen. The grassroots movement of the people will prevail um, as, the, as the cancer incidences go down, as more and more people start gravitating from combustible cigarettes to digital. Uh, you will see decreases in health insurance costs due to lower amounts of, of uh, you know, tobacco-related cancer. So this is my prediction. I might not know anything about any of this stuff, but this is the way I see it going. And after you know four decades of being in the business world, I think I got a pretty good pulse on where things are going. So that's my political grandstanding today, Paul. How'd I do? Well, he <laughs> pressed me. <laughs> okay. All right. That's the end of Vape News Radio, show number 11. Please join us next time. We're going to be right back with show number 12. And again, Norm Bauer on behalf of Vape Mentors, Vape News Radio, and Vape News Magazine. Thanks again for listening. You've been listening to the ramblings and rantings of that crazy person who calls himself a vape mentor, Norm Bauer. On Vape News Radio, the only show that takes a look at the voice of vaping in this new emerging industry.